We got a tough question for you, I think. Okay. Well, just like scapulars. I'm ready. Scapulars is a thing. For Scapulars some people, it's a confusing thing. Uh huh. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. I'm Father Gregory Pine. I'm Francis Friar of the Renewal. And I am a Dominican Friar of the Province of St. Joseph. And uh, this is Sense Presents. Welcome back. Thanks. Can you explain? Scapulars. I can I can try to explain scapulars. Um, so there are a, a handful of different scapulars out there. Um, you may have come across the one that's most popular. Popular is the Carmelite scapular, the brown scapular. But little known fact, other people wear scapulars as part of their religious habits, and then there are kind of small versions of those types of scapulars. So like I, he stands up. He pulls his scapular up. I'm wearing a scapular. The scapular was given to the Dominican order in the first years, uh, just during the time of St. Dominic. St. Dominic was a canon of the Cathedral of Osma in Spain. So he would have worn the tunic, like this thing, and then he would have worn a capoose, which is like this thing, and then he would have worn a surplice, which is like what altar servers wear when they have a cassock on. Yeah, he wouldn't have had a scapular. But there was this uh, professor who was thinking about becoming a Dominican, and he was on his way to Jerusalem making a pilgrimage. A lot of these details aren't terribly important, but um, he fell sick, and St. Dominic prayed for his healing. The Blessed Mother appeared to him and healed him, for one, good start of any encounter, and then showed him the full habit of the Dominican order. So specifically, she gave him the scapular. Since its incorporation by many religious orders, uh, the scapular has been a sign of Marian devotion, of Marian consecration of a certain sort. I think like originally, the scapular signified that you were yoked with the sweet yoke of Christ. So the word scapular actually comes from the Latin scapula, which just means shoulder, right? So it's a thing that you would wear over your shoulders so as to signify that you were consecrated, that you were given to the Lord. But yeah, during the Middle Ages, it became more associated with Marian piety, and then there were promises attached to the scapular. Specifically, that if, you know, with the brown scapular, if you were to die wearing the brown scapular, um, that you would be assured not to suffer uh, eternal punishment in hell. So it's like uh, you, provided that you wear this devoutly, can have some confidence, some assurance, some hope that you're going to go to heaven. Uh, there are different um, kind of rules and regulations for wearing a scapular. And I think that sometimes when people read them, they get a little bit nervous because it sounds like uh, you're making a deal with the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's like, okay, it has to be a, of wool. It has to be worn on the skin. It has to be both front and back connected by a cord. Um, you know, like, yeah, you can take it off to shower, but you shouldn't take it off too much. And I don't know, I think, I think sometimes people can get like a little bit scrupulous about it or begin to treat it as if it were magical or as if it were a talisman. What we wanna do is cultivate like a real sacramental sensibility about the scapular. And the sacraments are, are different than magic because with magic, you just say whatever you say, whatever Harry Potter says, and then the thing happens. Whereas with sacraments, sacraments work by virtue of belief, right? So they work provided that one performs them and receives them faithfully, okay? So you can't deal faith out of the equation. And so what's important for us when approaching, when, when approaching uh, this here devotion of the scapular is to cultivate right faith. Not to say like manage your expectations because it might not work out for you, right? But to say that we should believe and we should believe with vim and vigor, right? But believe, okay? Now I'm going to conveniently look to my left and find out where I'm gonna say. The sacraments kind of, they extend the logic of the incarnation into the world. So St. Augustine says that a sacrament is a sign of a sacred thing making uh, men and women holy. All right, so it's a sign that makes people holy. So it, it causes grace. It causes grace in the life of the believer and it does so specifically by sign value. Okay, so you can think of like the sacrament of baptism, for instance. Um, the priest or the deacon or in cases of emergency, whomever, pours water over the head of the individual and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So it's a sign of cleansing. It's a sign of washing. And that sign communicates cleansing or washing from sin. So it does what it signifies, provided that the priest intends what the church intends. All right, so he's like, I'm doing this sacramental thing. And provided that the recipient receives it worthily, right? So it's not just like... Um, with respect to the sacrament of baptism, like somebody just goes about in their neighborhood, just 
pouring water on the heads of all the children who are playing street hockey and just like kind of mutters, I baptize you, I baptize you, I baptize you, right? That, that begins to get a little bit magical because the recipient, who is probably capable of believing, you know, if, you know, these children are the age of reason, um, they aren't being addressed as believers. They're being addressed as, you know, kind of objects of magical acts, all right? So with, with the scapular, it's not like we should go around hospitals finding convicted felons and serial killers and whomever. Right as they're about to expire, we should like sneak scapulars over them and then just be basically assured that they're going to heaven because it's, it's, not, it's not that type of sign. Rather, it's, it's a sacramental, okay? So it's not a sacrament in the way that baptism or confession or the Eucharist are, but it's a sacramental, which extends the logic of the sacraments into the world. How do they do that? Well, they cause grace. Not in the same way that the sacraments cause grace. So you may have heard the phrase ex opere operato. So the sacraments cause grace ex opere operato, which means by the very work having been done, by the very work having been performed or worked, okay? So provided that it's done by a minister who intends what the church intends and provided that you receive with faith, it does the thing, okay? Whereas with the sacramentals, it's more so dependent on your disposition, okay? So if you are very pious and very devout in your use of the scapular or your use of the rosary or etc., then you are better disposed to receive the grace of God. So it's, it's a little more dependent upon how piously, how devoutly you do the thing. And that's true <clears throat> of the scapular. So the devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is signified by the wearing of the scapular as a kind of sweet yoke of Marian devotion, it is fruitful, right? It's efficacious. Um, it extends the logic of the sacraments into the world, uh, and it does in us, right, what the sacraments do by this kind of, um, yes, yeah, supplementary, or I don't know that I love that word, um, but, it, but, it, but it extends the work of the sacraments in our lives. I don't think that we should permit this to distract us from the most uh, basic or fundamental teachings of the faith, right? We're always going to point to the Blessed Trinity and to the Incarnation as bedrock, foundational, of greatest importance. But, but from those most basic teachings of the faith, which are enshrined in the creed, there are other hugely important teachings of the faith, right? Like the place of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the dispensation of salvation. And we believe that what Christ merits, right? Injustice by virtue of his God, well, by virtue of the grace at work in his life, the charity and obedience that he exhibits throughout the course of his life, our Blessed Mother also merits for us, right? By a kind of friendship with her, with her son, by a kind of association with her son. And so, though Christ, though it is true, decidedly true, uh, as expressed in the letter to the Hebrews, that Christ is the, the soul, the unique, the one mediator of salvation, so too, Our Lady has a role or a kind of part to play in the Lord's mediation. And when the Lord came into the world, um, you know, at the incarnation, he did so through her. And so when Christ is made anew in us, right, when, when we fill up, as it were, what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, then Our Lady plays a role in that, right? Um, and, and the scapular is, is part of that. It reminds us of our Marian devotion. It reminds us of the place of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the dispensation of salvation. And it charges us, it kind of fires us with love for the mysteries that she mediates through, you know, the mediation of our Lord Jesus Christ, her most beloved son. Uh, so yeah, it's not magic, it's not a talisman, it's not like a get out of purgatory automatically card, right? But it's part, it's a, it's a feature of our life of faith, which um, is related to the sacraments, but ultimately draws us to the very life of God. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like about having you give these videos is I don't have to add anything. <laughs> For more from Father Gregory, check out God's Planning, where he has other friends. Oh, I do have other friends. He has other friends. Yeah, at least four. For, for that's pretty good, pretty good for Dominican. Yeah, yeah I know, right? right. I, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing over here. Yeah. Uh, for more from the friars and myself, you can check out Habits for Holiness and then the podcast, Friars Podcast, Book Book Podcast. All right, we'll see you again next week. Have a good week, everybody. We are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos, poco a poco, little by little. We're gonna make it. <laughs>